before we can find a barycentric representation for our graph, we first want to find a so-called Schnuder realizer. For a Schnuder realizer, we first need a Schnuder labeling. So let's say that we have some barycentric representation of a planar graph and we have some triangle inside here. By our property for some index, x must be larger than both y and z. By our property, there is some index such that x is closer to a here than y and z are. Then there must be some index such that y is larger than x and z are. And this cannot be the same index as in the first, because otherwise we have a contradiction here. Then we have x1 greater y1 greater x1. And then for the third index, z has to be larger than x and y. Following these indices, we can put a label at every angle inside this triangle. So x has the larger 1 value, so the angle here is a 1. y has the larger 2 value, so this angle here is a 2. And z has the largest 3 value, so the angle here is a 3. This uniquely defines us a labeling of all the angles in our barycentric representation. For our algorithm, however, we have to go the other direction. We have to find a barycentric representation, and we want to find one based on a labeling. So we have to define first what kind of property such a so-called Schnuder labeling must have. So we want to label all internal angles with 1, 2, and 3, such that at every face it looks exactly like this. We have all the three labels, and we have 1, 2, 3 in counterclockwise order. So x is closer to a, this closer to b, and this to c. We cannot have a, then c, then b. Also, for every vertex, if we look at the angles around it, then we first must have some 1 angles, then we must have some 2 angles, and then we must have some 3 angles. So this vertex is closer to a than these neighbors, it's closer to B than these neighbors, and it's closer to C than these angles. Why do these intervals have to be non-empty? Well, you can try to verify this. If, let's say, there is no 1, that means that all the neighbors of this vertex are closer to A than the vertex itself. And then that means that there is some triangle that cannot be closed between the 2 and the 3. Just try to draw it and you will see. From this labeling, we will get a realizer. And a realizer is a labeling of the edges instead of the angles. Well, let's have a look at two triangles here. We have our labeling for this triangle, and there also must be some labeling for this one. Now, on one of those two sides of the edge, both labels must be the same. And we will direct the edge towards the side. And we also give it the same label as the two labels of the angles on this side have. This way, for every edge, we get a direction and a label or a color. And now this labeling gives us a Schnuder realizer, sometimes also called a Schnuder wood, if one property holds for every interior vertex. So let's look at the labels here again. We have these three stops where we jump from a 1 to a 2, from a 2 to a 3, and a 3 to a 1. At each of them, on the other side, there must be the same label. So this one must go somewhere where or both labels are 3. This must go somewhere where both labels are 1. This must go somewhere where both labels are 2. So we have exactly one outgoing edge for each of these labels in our oriented labeling. And in between, all the edges must come in. So if we look at the edges around this, then we first have this leaving edge, then everything here must be entering with a number 3, then we have this leaving edge, then everything here enters with a number 1, we have this leaving edge, and everything here enters with a number 2. So we get a partition of the edges in three sets, the red, the blue, and the green set. Let's have a look at an example. We have a triangulation here, we have three outer vertices, 
and we put labels on all the interior angles. Now if we follow our rules, let's have a look at this example here. This has a 1, 2 here and a 3, 3 here, so this is an outgoing green edge, this is incoming red, this is outgoing blue, and this is outgoing red. We can do this for all the vertices, and then we get something that looks like this. And this is a valid Schnuder realizer. But we can easily see that it is not unique. If we just look at this triangle here, we can flip these edges and we still have a valid Schneider realizer. Because the only thing that changes is that are these three vertices. And if we look at this one here, instead of going from outgoing green to outgoing red and then incoming green, we have an incoming blue in between. Here, instead of going from outgoing green to outgoing red with a blue in between, we first have an incoming red and then outgoing green, outgoing red. And here, instead of having outgoing blue, incoming red, we first have incoming green and then the outgoing blue. But still everything is fine. We still have the local properties and both of these are valid Schnuller realizers. But there are two important properties. The first one, if we look at all the inner edges incident to A, B and C, then they are all incoming of the same color. So A only has red incoming edges, B only has blue incoming edges, and C only has green incoming edges. Also these three colors give us three trees that cover all the inner vertices and one outer vertex each. So if we just look at the red, this is a tree that has all the interior vertices and the root is one outer vertex. The same for the blue and the same for the green. And this is easy to see because at every vertex we must have some outgoing edge for every color and this always points to the parent. We now want to prove that such a Schnuder realizer always exists. And for that we want to make use of edge contraction. Contracting edges you already know from the first lecture from minors. Let's say we have this edge AX here and we want to contract it. Then we get the following, which looks like this. And since we want this still to be a triangulation, it's important that A and X only have exactly two common neighbors. Otherwise, if we assume that B3 is also a common neighbor like here, then we would get this drawing. But now we see that we have a multi-edge here and this is not allowed. So we have to remove one of those and then we get a larger face wherever we remove this edge. And Compton proved in 1976 that if we have a plane triangulation with three vertices on the outer face, then there is always a contractible edge where one vertex is on the outer face and the other vertex is in the interior. So we can always do such a contraction until we only have the triangle left. And with those contractions we can prove that every plane triangulation has a Schnuder labeling and by this a Schnuder realizer. And we do that by induction on the number of vertices via edge contractions. So when we go downwards towards just a triangle then it's very easy to get a labeling. We just put one to three there and we're done. And now we have to show that if we contract an edge and we want to expand it again, that we can extend the labeling we have. So let's say we have our labeling here. This is our vertex A, so all the labels here have to be a 1. And here we must have in counterclockwise order 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3. So all the labels here are fixed. There is no choice here. Now if we expand to this, we still want to have something valid. How can we do that? We don't want these labels to change to make sure that the properties still hold at these vertices. That means we still have 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, so these all have to be 1s. And we still want the labels at A to be a 1, and so that gives us a 2, 3 here and a 2, 3 here, which means that this is a green edge and this is a blue edge. Here all the edges were red and pointed towards A. The same still has to hold here. And these other new edges now are also red and they are pointed towards X. 
everything else still stays the same as before, so all the properties still hold. And from this proof, we do not only get the existence of a realizer, but it also immediately gives us an algorithm. And with that algorithm, we can find a Schnuder labeling in linear time. And in your homework exercise, you will have to prove how to do this in linear time.